Hi, everyone. Hello. Well, go ahead. Welcome back to the Knitting Place podcast. Podcast number what, Diana? 200. Happy Yay. 200. <laughs> we need some uh, fireworks and some uh, opportunities. <laughs> Sound effects. Right? New Year's Day. <laughs> Explosions. Podcast Explosives. number 200. Can you believe that? It's been a long time. I don't even know how many years. Oh, my goodness. I don't even know. I couldn't even tell you. Well, we would. Well, obviously, we could tell you if we went back and looked at podcast number one. Wouldn't That's it tell so us? Funny, yeah. It tells how many I years have no ago idea it was. How many years it shows been. you what we know. But, but in we, any event, it's been several years. Yeah, but in the beginning, we didn't really start. We weren't so frequent with it. No, this is no, only no, coming no, up like no. for the past maybe two years. We've tried to be. We tried to do it weekly. More intentional. Yeah. Anyway, here we are. Happy fall. Yes, yes, yeah. We were just talking, Diana and I were looking up and seeing when was it really fall. You know, a lot of times people say it's the 21st, they say it's I the know. 22nd. It's the 23rd. It was the 22nd. Well, right. Yeah, 22nd. But, this but year. listen, you know, you always have to check. Who knows? I always feel like it's on the 21st. But March now, 21st. when do they change the clocks? Do you know? I, I know. think that's end of October, beginning of last they changed weekend. It. They changed it. It used to be earlier, but they moved it back because people always complain it gets dark so early. So it's not like it's some... now November second. Oh, really? Right. It used to be like October. I feel like you know, for Halloween, it's so sad when it's like if they move the clock before Halloween. Mm-hmm. Well, it should be dark when they're trick or treating. <laughs> creepy. <laughs> That doesn't bother me. It's got to be a, you okay? It's got to be a little spooky when they're oh trick or treating, goodness. doesn't it? But anyway, that was always my favorite holiday as a kid was Halloween. I still love trick or treating. I still love coming home and opening all my candy, not eating it, like going through to see what you got. Doing inventory. Doing inventory. <clears throat> I like. Did you ever see those? Um, I don't know if Johnny Carson used to do it. Maybe it wasn't him. It was Jimmy Kimmel, I think. Jim, Jimmy he Fallon. Would, Jimmy, no, well, Jimmy Fallon. Maybe, no, it was Jimmy was the, Kimmel, I thought, who Kimmel did it. With the kids? They, he oh would take God. the kids' candy. He would tell the kid. They, the parents would tell the kids they ate the candy the, the next best. day. <laughs> have it secretly recorded. Love That's that. The, yeah. So mean. It is mean. It really is. But it's, <clears throat> it's funny when you watch it, you know. Anyway. Totally. So anyway, so happy 200th. So looking back, Dinah, what are some of your, your reflections on 200 episodes? reflections whether it's 10 years or it's eight years that we're doing it it's a number of years i mean we were doing it during the at the beginning of the pandemic we were for sure doing it at that well, point i mean we'd been doing honestly, it for a while Lisa and so, melissa were the ones who encouraged us to do it correct so it was right after they started theirs mm. that we did ours maybe a year later or so uh, maybe more no i don't even know because we saw them we were at first right 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 i was and, so embarrassed to record a podcast well the, the, the reason we did it was that we said we could record it but we don't have to publish publish it, it. <laughs> and what the you know what's always crazy and what amazes me <clears throat> is that people always ask you know <clears throat> i always go home to edit yeah and everyone thinks that i cut and splice no we don't yeah no <laughs> this is like a live recording it's too we've much never work. <laughs> we've never cut anything out no no. The only thing I edit is I put in the well, titles. Well, we may have edited once when we we lost something, and we had remember we had to put two together because something was lost. Didn't you have to do that once? You had to, we had to start or, or I think know, there was a something happened. It was the phone rang. Yeah, yeah, the phone rang, and I think it was right. two. Yeah, that was, was to merge. Right, you had to merge it. <clears throat> but that was. But I've a never cut. had to cut any or edit. Thank goodness, anything out. I can't imagine. I mean, well, I guess doing we could to say something. something yeah. Right. And so I ha I'm grateful for that. There you go. Well, listen, it's organic, as they say. Yes, totally. <laughs> right? Um, I don't know. That's like probably my biggest. Uh, what? When you're saying reflecting, like reflecting on the, the years. Podcast, yeah. Right? yeah. Well, it's, it's a lot of content. It is a lot of content, you know. And I think that, you know, the reason we keep doing it is because the the community that you engage with, you know, you, it's a community, whether you're in person engaging. or you're via Zoom. You know, it's relationships. And um, I love the relationships and the friendships that we've created throughout the years. Right. I love that there are new friendships, old friendships. Right. That, you know, it's funny because we really share a lot about our, some of our private lives, you right. know. And right. it's so interesting when you meet someone in person physically, which 
in this case, it's very hard when we're doing the podcasts right. because we have how many subscribers? Like 7,800, 7,800. So close to 8,000 subscribers. Right. But certainly right. I don't know everybody. Oh, of course. You couldn't. You couldn't. <clears throat> but, um, I, you know, it's. I would love to meet everyone, you know. Right. When we talk about certain events and certain things that we want to do, it's always nice when people say, oh, we'd love to. But host. even if you did that, you wouldn't, I mean, you, you'd meet like. You'd meet a, a, a fraction. And not even a, t a teeny right. fraction. Like if you were to go to Rhinebeck. Right, yeah, right, if you right. go to Rhinebeck. You know, and people Could come, be. you know, you, you meet, I, I would love to go to Rhinebeck this year. I hope mm -hmm. I can make it, but it's going to be a last minute decision. There you go. And, uh, yeah, I just would love to put faces and names together. Right. And, well, as certainly there you could do more than you could probably do anywhere else. Yes. Because I would say, because there's so many, there's so many people there, right. you know, and yep. people come from all over for Rhinebeck. Which would be fun. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's been amazing. I think it's been an amazing ride. Well, it's fun. It's a different medium, you know, and it's so, you know, nowadays there's, you know, we've got AI now. They're talking about this AI stuff and all this. I mean, I'm telling you, you've got kids that are in that field. You know, they know more about it. I know nothing about it. Andrew was watching something the other day. It turned out it was AI generated, you know, which was fine. I it, you know, but the, the point is, you know, you might not even, you may watch something, not even know it's AI generated. It's, it's scary. A, it's really scary. I was There's watching these two guys yesterday were talking, and one of them is the guy that invented the scroll, the ability to scroll. Okay. To, and he was saying he almost, they were talking about AI, and they were saying how AI is wonderful, but, you know, sometimes we rush too much to put things out there. 100%. And that you have to be so careful with it because it can be good, but it can be bad. And, but they were saying about the scroll, he was, had said that um, he almost felt guilty about Introducing it, introducing it. the scroll because he feels that there have been you know ADD like the bad things to yeah. to, be, to have you know yeah. everyone's on their scrolling they're on their phone they're whatever interesting isn't that interesting it's very interesting these guys are so young the attention span I don't even know what it is yeah for um, when you talk about the scroll or even the swipe when yeah, you're looking at yeah, videos yeah. there's a certain i don't know what it is my kids would probably know but there's a certain attention span and if you don't grab it or grasp it in that yeah. specific time slot like you can lose viewers correct and i mean there's so many people on i don't know um if you've seen some of the people that you follow on instagram or mm -hmm. social media mm -hmm. a lot of um people who are vendors so meaning people who own shops whether it's a yarn dyer, a yarn shop. Something in the industry where so, they have a business. Someone who's pul right, publicizing something. They're finding that because of the algorithms changing mm -hmm. that people, they're l losing eyeballs, per se, meaning the viewers. And they're talking about how to, I mean, I'm not focused on that. I'm really not. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not looking to see how well, many likes I get right, on right, a photo. Right, right, I don't right, care. Right. I love you all. If you see it and it reaches you and it that's inspires fine. you, right. that's wonderful. Right. But I don't fret if I only got five likes on a picture. Right. That's not the, right. you know. I, what bothers me is, like, they're always trying to outsmart the algorithm or do something that will get people more views or more draws to a website. And you see that when they send you, if there's something they want you to notice, you have to comment to get the information. And I almost am beginning to resent that now because it's like, I, I don't want, I don't want to organic. do that. I don't want to do that. You know, or not even, no, they'll say comment recipe for the recipe, that kind of a thing. But Which that's is because, fine, but you but, know, so that is an exact course of action. The more comments probably they get, it draws to their it website. It draws to the algorithm right. that, increases right. the viewership but and the you comments. feel like you're being played sometimes <laughs> I, I can't <laughs> I feel like you know it's too much i welcome I when you guys leave, right like yeah. i love when you leave organic comments correct um love it when you you know if you like and follow and subscribe and it's it's all organic i don't want to pay for a subscriber i don't want to right 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 i don't want to say oh here's our 200th episode we have freebies but you need to tag the knitting place oh tag i two know friends i know i know and i, <laughs> I did can't. do that the other day i did that for a bread giveaway did it was a, it was a good giveaway and so did you win <laughs> <laughs> that's the other thing I did it and it was it depends what they want you to do if they say follow me or comment whatever 
I don't mind doing that and tag a person, whatever. Right. But um, so I did that. But then I thought to myself, do I ever did it? I'll never know if I win. I'll never win. How would I even know if I won? I mean, wouldn't they DM you? Or I would think so. But I mean, yeah. the chances, you know, my point being that I said I really probably shouldn't have even done it. But it was a good giveaway. So that's the only reason I did it. And speaking of giveaway, for a 200th hey, isn't episode, that good? Isn't that good? good layup, <laughs> we do have a giveaway. We actually have two. It's um, one of these beautiful bags that was uh, given to us by Dell Q. It's a snap bag with a zipper in the front. And we have, I don't know who the follower is, but somebody suggested we give 200 grams That's right, they did, of yarn. Right? And so we have 200 grams of this gorgeous Kokon. Uh, I think it's colorway, what is it, Sonia? Colorway Sonia in the fingering weight. This is 100 gram ball, two. And guess what? We have two of them. Yep. The second one is filled with fiber seed. What does the bag say? Uh, filled with love and yarn. Oh, there you it's go. It's a great That's project. Right. It's got a double pot, a pocket. Yep. Uh, and then this is the fiber seed fingering weight. Two skeins of the same. So you could probably make a shawl. Uh, this is the colorway Pluto. And what's the yardage there, Pam? I need to put my glasses on. Sorry. 480. 480. Okay. Nice. So 480 and 480, 960 yards. Start looking at some patterns. Sure. <laughs> Maybe you can even do a t-shirt. <coughs> it depends. Or a shell. Yeah. And I think the Cocon has... For 37. Uh, I think it was 400 or 398. That's the super wash, right? Yeah, let's see. 349 yards. Oh, that's 350. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's only 700 yards. But still, a beautiful gift. Yep. So we have two beautiful giveaways, and we'll tell you at the end of the episode what you need to do. <laughs> Complaining, we make them do something. To win. No, well, we'll do a number generator. This right. is not for raw it's not like views that. or anything. No. Right, right. <laughs> That's so funny. No, not for that. It's to win something. Of course. Um, so, you want to introduce yourself? I am Pam uh, Sapp on Instagram and Ravelry and Pam Sappianza on Facebook. My name is Dinah. You can find me at The Knitting Place on Instagram, Ravelry, and Facebook. There you go. And you can always subscribe if you're not a, a if you don't currently subscribe, you can hit the subscribe button. And that way you'll know whenever we have a podcast that comes up. All right. And right. if you like the episode, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, if there's uh, something that's inspiring or you have a question, you're always welcome to leave a comment. Of course. Uh, throughout. Sometimes we ask questions just to engage with you all. It, it's fun to read the comments. And, <clears throat> yeah, you can find all our show notes at the bottom, which right. will have links to the patterns and the kits and the projects that we show. Of course. There we go. There you go. What are you wearing? I am wearing the Dune Drifter. I said to Diane, I couldn't remember the name of it. The Dune Drifter. It's from Wool and Pine, and I used merino linen. This is the knitting place merino linen, right, Diane? No, no, was it's it? not. No, Maybe. I don't think so. It no, I think Moondrake. it's Moondrake. Um, it was colorway, was brick, but it's got this, it was knit horizontally, not vertically, and it's got a great little um, lace, bottom. lace pattern, and it goes around, and it was done that way side to side side to side very cool so like right. sleeve to sleeve correct correct what about yourself dan what are you wearing um i'm wearing miserina yeah miserina that's an oldie but goodie. yes miserina is designed by caitlin hunter another um finger and right. weight merino linen top i kind of called this sweater like uh kibbles and bits it was lace a little bit of color work. Yes, there was some yes, cables. Yep. So I love that there was this trio. I've never done a sweater that incorporated lace, cables, and color work. And then the body also has a stitch pattern yes, to now, it. It's not just stockinette. <clears throat> correct. There is a stitch. Um, and she actually also offers it, I believe, with an option to do a yarn over. Oh, was so that could, right? the body could ha be with an eyelet. Oh, hold on. You go. I'll get it, Dana. Oh, okay. she's from next door. Okay, that's fine. Um, so, yeah, this is Miserina. It's designed by Caitlin Hunter. I knit it in Moondrake Merino Linen. And, of course, it had two colors, two of the main body and one of the contrast color. So this was a fun pattern 
It was knit from the top down. Um, I don't know if we mentioned we had hosted a class because not many people are comfortable knitting side to side. On the so Dune Drifter. Dune Drifter was yeah, one of those. That was last summer. Right. One of those um, knit alongs that we hosted and it, the class is recorded. So if you are inspired and you're not sure about how to modify and change um, or uh, even understand the pattern mm -hmm. because it is knit with a knit cast on. <clears throat> And again, working from side to side, if you wanted to adjust it, we covered all of that in our class. Yeah. So you're always welcome. This was a good class. It was a great class. There's information in it. As, and Diner and I, as you can see, are wearing a favorite weight sweater. We're wearing fingering weight. Yeah. Wool, we right? talked about that last time. Yep. What is your favorite weight? That's a good question. Fingering. Oh, you're asking no. me. Yeah. <laughs> Asking them. I know. I know what yours is. <laughs> but I was wondering what, um, yeah, like in the audience, like what is your favorite weight? Well, I guess if you're talking about a sweater, you know, a shawl, they're probably going to say fingering. Right. Well, not necessarily. Well, not necessarily, but right. they're certainly easier to wear with, with all these big shawls now that people are making, right? Right. So let us know. Favorite weight. But that's not the question you're asking. What is your favorite way to knit? Oh, for that? For a sweater. Oh, no. I thought you were going to. Oh, no, for the giveaway? No. No, no, no. no. That's a different Curiosity question. Curiosity killed the cat. That's what we <laughs> want to know. Um, yeah. So Gee. just while we were talking about that. Right. How yeah. about whips? <clears throat> whips. Well, first what? of all, why don't you tell me about your weekend <laughs> and your week? Well, Uneventful? Uneventful. Nothing special. I'm trying to think what I do. Went to Audrey's yesterday. Took That's apart nice. her bed. That was fun. Vacuumed her carpets and her floors. Why did you take apart <laughs> her bed? She had a bed delivered today. Oh. She bought one of those beds. From where? Uh, oh, she told me from where. Sophie just got one from Wayfair. West Wayfair. Oh. Wayfair. Maybe Wayfair? it's Wayfair. That's what Sophie got. I'm not sure. It's a bed one from of the. Wayfair. It might be Wayfair. It's one of the ones where the mattress lifts up and there's storage underneath. It's not a drawer that pulls out. It lifts up. It's cute. Um, she didn't have it yet. It's coming today. And she had a standard IKEA bed okay. that had like a wooden headboard and so very question. nice. It's so funny that she had IKEA and now she went to Wayfair. Yeah. The kids recommended. So Sophie just moved in mm -hmm. to the city. Mm -hmm. And um, when she asked, <clears throat> you know, what kind of a bed should I get? A lot of people had suggested IKEA. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I personally said, you know what? IKEA is great. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. and I hate to say but, mm -hmm. you have to assemble it. Right. And sometimes with that mass production, mm -hmm. like if a screw is, this is your bed. Right. You know, like right. you're sleeping in it every night, eight hours a day, hopefully. Right. <laughs> at well, least. Audrey got this bed. How long did well, her Well, first last? of all, she's had it for a while. The she, IKEA? Oh, yeah, yeah. She, she was she, happy with that? Probably she got the IKEA because that's what she could afford when she got the bed. Um. But as she's taking it apart yesterday, she knew exactly how to take it apart. Cause she said, you know how many times I've taken this bit apart and put because it back together moved. because she's moved. I'm surprised that it withstood that. Oh, yeah. it was. It's, the wood was solid. It yeah. was solid. It, it wasn't, wasn't that Oh, pressed, yeah, no. It, no oh, no, 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 no. It was solid. Oh, so I, I'm yeah, thinking no, of their, you know, their typical, right. what's yeah, material. Yeah, but the press, no, it wasn't that. The it pressed wasn't that. wood. It was really, because we had to carry it downstairs. And we actually, we took it because her, her trash day would have been Wednesday. I brought it home here and I dumped it in the dumpster. Oh, wow. Because we took everything How apart. How heavy was that? Yeah. Well, she had the slats on the bottom, but the, okay. the we took the frame apart. We took everything apart. And what the headboard. What size bed was it? Full. Full size bed. So if we could have it. was had a full it. size bed. Oh, well, see now if I had known. It's very, <laughs> but her mattress, her mattress now she got at Brook Linen. You know, Brooke Lennon, the, you know, like Is this. that a mail order? Yes, yeah, an online. Yeah. And her pillows, we were moving her pillows. I said, these pillows are so heavy, Audrey. I said, I if I can lift them. I said, where did you get these pillows? And she said, Brooke Lennon. She What's got the Brooklyn? pillows when she got the mattress, mattress maybe. She, but they were, you know, and I so said, funny, I really have, have to get a, a good pillow. Emily, you know, Emily does bedding. That's her thing. Right. And Emily's so always saying, Mom, them. you need to get some new pillows. But pillows are the kind of thing that... I don't know. When did you ever buy a pillow? 
When do you buy a pillow? How often do you replace your pillow? Not often. But Emily is like in the bedding business, so she'll, you know, she's like, well, you know, your skin sheds, yes. and she all this disgusting stuff. Yeah, but don't you wash the pillows? <laughs> of course, that's I wash my sheets every, every week. week. <laughs> I know. But you know, that, that's her thing. So anyway, her pillows were so heavy, that's and her wild. mattress was a very nice mattress. So Sophie's waiting for her mattress, Brooklyn, and I'll have to ask her. She yeah. got a Wayfair bed. I, yeah, I'll ask her. I'm going to um, message her. She just called me before she we put went it on together. To tell me it was delivered today. That's so funny. She's spending her first night in the apartment tonight. Oh, is she really? But By she herself? Or she no, no. She's got three roommates. Oh, good. <clears throat> and? And that's it. Is she she's, excited? She, of course she is. She asked me when I'm coming. She moved in this weekend while we were away. She yeah. started. She doesn't really have much in there, but, you know, she's going to slowly move of things course. in. Well, does she have her own room? They each have their own room. Okay, I mean, so she has her own enough room. Enough to fit a full size bed. Mm -hmm. There's a closet. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else can fit in there. <laughs> Probably not much the way they she do has a window nowadays. that faces a brick wall. So her other friend, who's a roommate, um, I think they found online one of those picture frames that yes, emulate yes. daylight. Oh, that's cute. So I think. Um, She's going to get that. You know, my kids used to have, maybe someone had a, no, did it face a brick wall? I'm not sure. Or Emily had a wall that was made of like bricks. No light is going to come in through there. Well, how do you know? Does she get, that was like when Tyler, my, my son-in-law, before they were married, and he had his first apartment, it was downtown, in this terrible area. He had a god-awful bedroom. That a face, I couldn't even tell you what a face. He had pigeons. She's going to be was in the corner, like her. So her bed will be against the wall, so it's got three sides. Like her, the width right. of the bed is the width of the, the room. length of the bed is the length of the room. Oh, is that right? Yeah, so it goes in like that. But she can walk around the bottom of the bed, can't she? No, she goes off to one side. Really? Yeah. Oh it's my like god! Isn't that terrible? They take something that probably it's was a one bedroom crazy. and they get like four bedrooms. I'm <laughs> sure that yeah, that's yeah, but. She said, I'm okay with it. I think they did one of those, like, you know, you draw straws to see who the biggest room. That's right. So, again, you know, when she was senior year in college, she got the smallest room. She and got, got it this again room. this time. Yeah. That she happened like, to Daniel, a, too, when he got uh, his had a, he had three other roommates, and he got the smallest, smallest room. room. Well, she said, I'll save on money. She said she'll save money because they're paying per square foot. And then if someone moves out, she can move up to a better, there you a go. better bedroom. There you go. You well, know, they signed the lease for did. a year. Well, that's good. And you got to start somewhere. Absolutely. you got to start somewhere. So I'm away this weekend, yeah. and we're with our friends, Bob yeah. and Julia, yeah. and her daughter is, they live in Philly, and they, her daughter is wanting to move to New York City. Mm -hmm. Now, coming from Philly, Julia is worried about, you the know, mom. safety. Yeah. 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 Sorry, my girlfriend's worried about her daughter's safety, mm -hmm. and she's sharing a story with me. Now, I don't know if you've heard, have you heard of this? What? About um, when... People go to a bar. Mm. There's like there was a ring, mm. three people, and like somebody will say, "Oh my God, add me to your Snapchat," and then there's another person who's one of the person's buddies. Mm -hmm. He's videotaping or she is videotaping the, your code to get into your phone, right, right. and then the third person somehow is getting all the information and depleting your bank account. Oh, like geez. Some, some kind of scam. Oh my God. So, of course, I'm sharing the story. Mm. And it's, I, you know, I don't know. It's so hard to talk to kids. Oh, they don't listen to you. She rolled her eyes. Yeah. She became dead silent. Yeah. Like, I've got three heads. Meanwhile, yeah. I'm just a concerned parent. I'm right. just sharing something right. that I heard. You right. know, I'm not saying, oh, my God, you can't gonna, move to the city. Well, this is going to happen to you. Be, you, have to, you have to be very careful. I swear. In ways that you never thought of before. Clearly is, is the thing I'm to you and I'm embarrassed. I think she looked at me like I had three dinosaur heads. Well, well, <laughs> you tell this is what happened to Audrey last year. You heard the story with Audrey. No, it was the day after Thanksgiving, and she went to the Americana. Americana here in town is an area that's got really it's a prestigious, really shopping nice center. And there was a Sephora. She went with her sister, so she's shopping in Sephora. Later that day, she goes home. She's living in Queens. She goes home. That's Friday. Saturday night, she goes out. And I think she was at a bar. It was a friend's birthday. And they were celebrating at a bar or whatever, a get-together with friends. I get a phone call Saturday. Really, it's Sunday morning now. It's 1 o'clock in the morning. I get a text, not a phone call, from someone asking me something about Audrey. I'm trying to remember specifically what happened. But I'm like, who is this person? It was a phone. No, it was a phone call. 
Was it a phone in the call? middle I of the to, night? It was like well I, well, I well, you know me. I stay up a little later, especially on a weekend. It was, I was up. It was maybe one o'clock. It was shortly after one. Actually, you stay up so I, know, late. I do. I do. <laughs> anyway, and I'm like, well, where is Audrey? So I called Audrey. No answer. And I don't track Audrey. I can't track her. And I said, I can't call Emily, my other daughter, she's with, with the kids. She's the kids at one o'clock right. in the morning. I wouldn't do that. So the next morning, I call Emily. I call Audrey again. No answer. Now where is she? And um, Emily said, well, just call, just call the number, because it came from a number. Another number messaged me saying something about Audrey, like you're not answering your phone or something like oh that, or goodness. some such thing, some other number. So my daughter said, call that number. I said, call the number? She said, yeah, call the number. Call the number, no one answers. Then the number answers me back at some point. Make a long story short, what happened was, oh, then this is, this is what makes so I thought this whole thing was odd. I thought this whole thing was odd, right? And Audrey ends up calling me. She's fine. Blah blah. She meets someone she, at she met this. She saw this guy at this bar, and he wanted her number. She gave him her number, but she changed one digit, which was so stupid. And our phones. When I got the phones, when the kids were much younger, they're all the same number, but it goes, you know. Oh, one zero, one, four, okay. five. So this guy Just takes this number, and he's very smart, right? And he's changing the last number. Now, mine is the one. Hers is the five. So, so she gave he messaged me. He messaged me. You know, I didn't answer him that night, but I answered him the next morning. And then he answered me back in the morning. He did answer me back. And I thought this whole thing was very odd. So he tells her, this is what he tells her at the bar. He tells her, he saw, I saw you the day before in Sephora. Sephora's out here on Long Island. They were in Williamsburg. How would he see her, happen to run into her in Williamsburg at a bar when he saw her in Sephora the day before? And he told her he saw her in Sephora. And she was in Sephora. Is that odd? That's and odd. I said, that, that's not right. And Emily's, well, you know, then Katie, well, you know that and of course Audrey's like you know they don't want to hear this I tell my son he said that's not good I said I told <laughs> See, I said am I, I the only one who thinks <laughs> that he sees her out here on Long Island what are the chances that he really saw her? and he happens to run into her the next night in Williamsburg at a bar now and so she gives her him a different number but changes it only by one digit now he starts texting I'm getting texts from him saying so my, where are you how come you're not answering my girlfriend at school I'm telling her the story and of course if I'm telling you you're gonna agree with me that this is a bunch right. of BS right so she has the ability to to look people up so she looked him up and and he's got like an alias are you kidding? I swear to God, he was living somewhere in Queens. I'm not going to say where, but, you Doesn't know, matter. somewhere in Queens. And uh, um, he, he he was renting in a house, and he took the owner's name. He was using the owner's name. I said, Audrey. You can't. I said, you know what I did, and I shouldn't say. Well, I'm not going to say what I did, because I shouldn't say anything. But uh, anyway. We just talked about not editing. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. But. But they, they poo-poo everything you say. Oh, please. I mean, come on. Sophie's, I wasn't born yesterday. So this guy like, was up to no Mom, good. Mom, I don't trust anybody. You know, and it's in that tone. And she's like, okay, bye. Like you're you know, a banana. Like dismissing like you're a me. banana. And I just feel like <laughs> I'm your mother. Yeah. I just want to share yeah. my concern yeah. or maybe even just, hey, alert you to something that may be, okay, of course, these Just kids, keep, they know be, everything. Just be on the lookout for it if anything like that happens. And you know what someone else at school told me? You know, they take these air tags. You know the air tags that you get with um, at Apple? Yeah. And one gal at school, they put it on their car, like by the wheel. By the wheel, what do you call that thing? The wheel. The hubcap? Not the Why? hubcap, the wheel well. The wheel well, because they, they track the car. They can track where you are. They can drop. So they can drop one of the. This is what I said to her at the time. Wait, I, I thought. For, I thought maybe Apple he changed tagged, the, Maybe no, he no. had it. Maybe he had an air tag on her. Oh, I don't know if they did. This was going. No, back. this is. Yeah, no, they've changed the laws. But they that, had. To, yeah, they had to. They could drop them in someone's handbag. How do you know you're in a bar? Well, not that they use handbags anymore. The kids, they don't. So <laughs> I'm dating myself. <laughs> they use a handbags. handbags. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway. Well, what do they use? 
They don't go out with handbags. I know my kids don't. They they carry they just their stupid phone with thing the little this sleeve little, or yeah, the sleeve little... for the credit card. No, everything's actually on the phone now. Apple right. Pay. Right. They, well, they used to going back a few years ago. Like my daughters would have the the little purse and they'd carry that with this. Right. But now they don't even do that because right. they don't need to. Like you said, purse. If I said that, my my kids would laugh at me. So we were away over the weekend. <laughs> I'm like, what do you have in your nap uh, in your backpack? And my friend Bob started laughing. He's like, backpack? <laughs> knapsack. You know? Like, oh, that's that a, you called it a backpack? a backpack? It should have been a knapsack? Oh, jeez. My kids also laugh at me when I say backpack. Well, there's, I mean, we could find a number of things that oh, they make fun of us for doing. Yeah. because I we're, just don't know how like, I, I don't, Dinah. Don't how do you even dress yourself in the morning? I don't know how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, you have no taste level. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Clearly, you don't know how to dress. You can't pick out clothes. How did you dress four kids? How did you ever manage it? I don't know. Here comes one of the beauties. <laughs> it's my daughter. So, anyway, what do you have as for our... What's a whip? Yeah, a whip. Was... Oh. What were you going to say? Nothing. Were you going to say a whip? No, no. Yeah, whip. You were going to say a whip. Definitely. Right. Okay. We're up to whips. <laughs> <laughs> works in progress whips i have my tanny again it doesn't it's on the same small needle i should put it on a bigger needle why am i such a small needle? i'm on the same because you don't like to push i've got over 300 stitches on this thing i'm with you I'll anyway show you mine. so Pushed. so here it is absolutely speaking of fall how autumnal is it this says palette? autumnal huh? i can't i wish i could spread it out it's going to come off the needle i'll help you show your colors there yeah, you go. There you go. And this is the colorway. That is just a stunning yoke. The colorway, what? The color, Goldie. Goldie from Spin Cycle. I Dying can't wait to get this back in stock. With, um, you're going to laugh at something. I think I found something at home that's got a, gain, a skein of Goldie in it. I said, do I use it for something else too? No, you keep going to the same colors? No, it's I a said, brand it new like color. Gold. Is it really? Then it's another color. It's another color then. I'll have to bring it in and show you. That's funny. Um, anyway. Um, and with Rowan, uh, Kids Hill K's tripled for the body. And uh, it's easy color work if you want to do some color work. So if you're new to color work, this is, um, we're also doing a knit along with this. We have our second knit along tomorrow. Right. We are hosting a knit along for those who are new to color work. So we, we recognize that not everyone is an experienced knitter. We mm -hmm. have new viewers to our channel. Yep. And uh, we thought it would be an amazing way to teach color work yep. we talk about and short rows too. beautiful the way they separating right. knitting a top down mm -hmm. um, i think there was a tubular cast on and we taught in an alternative way right so there's there was a lot actually now the way it was written she had the main color the mohair tripled and then she had a color two contrast color, colors two contrast colors we decided to do ours with the dyed in the wool Right, That's so that was our little variation. Yeah. But yeah, we have some people in our class that are doing it with the two two contrast colors. And you can choose, you choose your own kit or your own yarn. You make it yours. So while Pam is talking about her tanny, this one is mine. Oh, look at that. Mine is like a taupe main color. Mm, that's pretty. And... Um, this is my dyed in the wool. I think it's called Wololo. Mm, it's also pretty. kind of autumnal, yep. I guess you could say. Yeah. Uh, I did slightly manipulate the colors because my colorway has a lot of brown in it. Yeah. Where I didn't separate it here in this section. Uh, you know, when I first knit it back a few episodes, I talked about how I ripped back and I re-knit it. You're into that color now, weren't you? No, now, now I'm you're into in the short body. Rows. Now you're into the body. Yeah. Gotcha. So we're doing the short rows and we'll be ready for class tomorrow. There you go. Yeah. So that's the tanny and it's designed by Ann Bent Cell. And you can find right. her pattern on Ravelry. And like I said earlier, all the projects will have links. Yep. Yep. What does she got, Diana? Um, I have my rib and welt scarf. Oh, is that the? Did we talk about that last week? We the did. Oh, that has been so popular. We, we thank you, everyone, for we all did. the kits. Yes, that you've purchased. This is from we, uh, Sweater Freak, right? Yes. Nice. Absolutely love her. You got um, a lot done on that. Well, this was an easy one to just kind of pick up and put down because right. it's just one skein in a bag. 
Are you at the even point now? No, there is no even. Oh, there is no. Okay. There is no even. So you get to, um, depending on your smaller you size. You reach a certain point. A certain number of stitches, and mm. then you change the stitch pattern. Oh. So it's actually a triangle. Oh, that's right. That's right. It right. is. That's right. Yeah. So I love it. I'm using the Clinton, excuse me, Clinton Hill Cashmere. What could be Hill more cashmere. decadent than yeah. this cashmere? This is going to be so oh. yum around my neck. It's um, bespoke Clinton Hill Cashmere. It's DK, right? DK weight. I think our kids have three skeins in them. So you can do a smaller scarf and knit a matching hat. Uh, also designed by Sweater Freak, or you can use the three skeins to do the ribbon welt in the larger scarf. And I think the difference in length is about 10 inches. The length you're doing, if you're doing the smaller one, I don't know if you I haven't want. decided yet. Okay. If I'm you would see how, like right. right now, I think I'm about almost, I'm about 12 repeats away from where I need to be. So and I'm how assuming. Many, how many rows is a repeat? Eight. Oh, wow. Oh, you still have a ways to go. Yeah. yeah. It's getting well, wider yeah, and wider. It is, right? So it right? takes longer, yeah. yeah, to knit. The large size is about 65 inches long. The size Dinah, if she makes the smaller size, I'm not saying she is, is about, is the smaller size is 55 inches. 7, 14, 21, 28. Yep. I love it. It's so yummy. Tell them what color it is, Dinah. This is her new colorway. It's called Carob. I love that um, name. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. chocolate brown. Love the Absolutely name. gorgeous. Uh, get up close. It's a little bit heathered. Maybe I'll make the hat for Tiffany. I absolutely love it. Tiffany loves she cashmere. Loves she that. I made her. Did I make? I made her a cashmere hat. I made her a hat out of the uh, cash. Um, the light. Cashmere the cashmere light. light and she just she would loved love this. it. She would love. It. She's a cashmere girl. She's like your basic camel or black I'd be stunning <laughs> I just got the so any of the colors you guys you can make up your own kit all the colors um, are available and you can make the hat with one skein of cashmere right yes yeah. also designed by sweater freak in fact I'll link both patterns um, loving this pattern so far so I'm looking forward to hopefully getting maybe wrapped in cashmere yeah but maybe my next week I'll get the to the change if I decide that this is long enough, oh, if you it all depends on how. Well, when you said you have to do 12 more repeats, is that on the smaller one? Smaller ones. Okay. I might just do two and then knit a matching hat or no matching hat. What do you mean do two? Two skeins. Do the oh, smaller right, right, one right, right. and then knit a matching hat. I think it depends where you're going to be. You have to look at the length and everything and see how it is. She's got a really cool hat. So check it out. I Jenny like it. by Sweater Freak. Yeah. She's a sweetheart, Jenny. I'm trying to do one run one repeat a day, two repeats a day. That's what you have to do. If you like um, what Dinah's showing you, Jenny or Sweater Freak on Ravelry has great patterns. She's got some great mosaic cowls and hats and shawls. Scarves. But I love her cowls. Remember that one I did, the Insta cowl, two years ago? I made it out of Rama. Yeah. That was uh, like a that mystery. Was a, knit, a mystery knit along on, yep. on Instagram. That and she fun. did it like in July okay, or August. Okay, Jenny, you need to do another one. <laughs> <laughs> that Wait, was that fun. That was a fun one. Right. And I missed the boat on that one. I would like to do one. And last year I did the Escher's Dream. Mm -hmm. Escher's Dream, is that what it is? Yeah, and she has a cowl for that. It, like, it looked like a hound's tooth, a hound's tooth um, scarf. Right. So she's she got some pine. great pieces, yep. The pine cowl and yep. scarf. She's yep. got a bunch. And she's got the, if you recall, Dinah did the, um, I don't know the name of it now, but it was like an animal print. You did it in green and black, olive the and black. Remember gorgeous, you did Gorgeous, the cheetah. And I made a hat for Lucy. You know, I tried the hat on the other day. I said, well, if it fits me, I'll wear it. But of course, it doesn't fit me. <laughs> you did it in child size. <laughs> yeah, that's a great, I'm not giving that hat away. That's a gorgeous hat. But I did. I I made it out of uh, Aurora Eight. Yes. The hundred percent merino, right. which was lovely. It's right. a lovely. You aren't going to knit cashmere. Which, for yeah, for <laughs> the three year old, really. Uh, if I had, she would have lost it. Yeah. Anything else that you have as far as webs? Yes, yeah, I have my well, my my uh, that crochet thing that I started. I saw a piece on Instagram, so I looked it up and I got it on Etsy. It's called the Molina, which I'll show you a picture of it on my phone. Um, it's right here. Oh, come on. They want to see my face to open up my phone. <laughs> and it's M-E-L-I-N-A, Melina Top. Here's a picture of it. Come on. Why isn't that? Oh, there we go. 
There you go. It's the Molina top. There you see it. It's very pretty. It's like a vest, right? I mean, you got to wear something under it for sure. Mm -hmm. And this is what I've done so far. Wow, you got a lot done, Pam. You think that's a lot? Yeah. Well, you I hardly had any, like you just had this much done. Yeah, well, I feel like I haven't done it. I mean, if I really concentrated on it, I could do, you know, more. I, you know what it is? I pick it up. And that that's the problem I have. I pick it up. I do a row, a row two rows. Same thing with that. I pick it up. I do. The, and that's why, you know, you make mistakes, right? Or you get nothing done. Or you get nothing done, right. Because so you're anyway, so busy ripping. What I have to decide, I was looking at the pattern list and I was going cross-eyed because she's wearing a smaller size and it's cropped. And she's saying that this is 20 cm's. What's 20 cm's? Eight inches? Yes. She's got eight inches before she begins the the, the armhole. I said, That's it? that would be like, that would cover my... my, uh -uh. my <laughs> so I said, no, that's not going to work for me. So what I'm trying to do is... Um, figure out where I should be, you know. And uh, what pattern was I knitting? The tanny top. She doesn't tell you. I was looking. She doesn't tell you. She doesn't give you a schematic. She doesn't tell you how deep the top is. No. And I'm you trying to figure to this figure out. out. If it, well, I did a row gauge. I'm looking at the row gauge. Based row upon gauge rows. And, base, and then figure out how many rows she has you knit right. to the armhole. And then you figure out your depth. Right. That's what I was trying Lot to do. That's exactly. But then again, you've got the short rows, and the short rows are in the back. You know, then right. I wouldn't the count the short rows. Correct. But she tells you to measure the length of the, the measurement. The one measurement she gives you is the length on the back from the center back to the bottom. And that's got your short rows in there because they're in the back. So, so anyway, long story short, I was like, you know. <laughs> said, oh my goodness, I have to figure this out. Anyway, so I have to do something similar with this because clearly I don't need a cropped. I don't <laughs> want it long. I mean, I find 21 inches is a good length for it's me. It's a great length. You know, 21, maybe 22. So I'm I have to, you. I kind of have to figure that out, you know, and uh, that's that. So last week I mentioned that I had picked a pattern that was similar to Pam's only in knitting. It's yes. called the Dream Weft. Uh, I think Diane commented that she had this in her queue and she was asking what yarn I was knitting it with and I actually tried to swatch it but you know so speaking of that harried state of mind when you're not really focused and concentrating I didn't swatch it well so I'm trying to use um, mohair and a sparkly yarn and I think the um, the look that I'm trying to achieve is it like a designer, um, a designer piece? So I'm not quite sure if it's going to work, but when I work it out, I'll let you know specifically mm -hmm. what it is that I'm going to use. Right. But what are you using is what I'd like to know. And if you're knitting this, um, it's called <clears throat> Dreamweft Sweater. Let me see if I can pull it up. It's really cute. What was it knit? What was it designed in? It's designed in, I think it was a DK weight yarn. No, fingering weight. But is she holding something together? It says 18 stitches equals 4 inches in lace pattern on largest needle work flat. So I think it's because of the lace work that it's... Um, doesn't look like fingering weight. No, it doesn't. But here it is. That's the sweater. And this one has sleeves. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I've yet to achieve the pattern stitch. I goofed. So I, I really need to sit down and concentrate on it. I do love the pattern. It's called Dream Weft Sweater. And uh, hopefully that'll be It's funny you say a new that. cast on. There was a thing on I love that. There was a thing on Instagram the other day and this young couple and she was off camera asking her husband, who I think he's a doctor, what certain female terms terms that would be more associated with women. Yeah, he's a very good one of the words was weft. And I said he's not gonna know what weft is. He didn't. He didn't know what it was. But, I mean, he did very well. It was a very funny thing to watch. <laughs> he knew a lot of stuff. Why are you laughing? <laughs> I, I'm just thinking of what it. What was it just, one of the words? When I heard weft, it reminded me. Oh, okay. oh, she was asking him all kinds of things. That's like, so funny. What a, a, a sponge a sponge was in, like, um, I forget what she called it. My you know mind what, went what in you a call? different I know direction. what you were thinking. <laughs> I know. You know, maybe I used the wrong word. You know when you put makeup on with those sponge things? What's another word for those things? 
Honestly, I have no idea. She used a word, and I don't know if it was sponge, but it, otherwise, he, but he knew what it was. He knew wow. what it was. And um, I'm that, trying to it's think. It's like a looks like a teardrop yeah right the, the blender or correct. something the bl maybe maybe a blend now how would he know but he knew it how would he know from blender anyway it's very funny it's very interesting that's funny mm -hmm. so is that your final whip yeah i don't have anything else i have one last whip this is my um new cast on it was my test knit for um natasha it is your test knit for natasha. it is not was it is it's currently being knit do you want to help me yeah sure this is the Honestly, it goes this way. Which way? Actually, let's this turn This is it the around. top? Yeah. Yeah. Right, it yeah. starts from the top Wait of the back. Wait a second. You're coming off over here. Oh, sorry. That's okay. I don't Thank want you. to lose your stitches. So this is the back of the neck right here. This is the top of the shoulder seam, and you're working down. Oh, I see. Do you have so a walk is, around this side, too? Yes. Do you see it there? No, I don't see it. There it is. Where? Right here. Oh, okay. So you have to mark. And it begins with short rows, and you're working your way down. Uh, if you recognize the motif here, this is like my artist shawl, which I did wear while I was away, and it was really... You did wear it, it yes? It was so fun. I didn't take my Maroon Bell shawl because I left it here. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> yes, I was in okay. Colorado this weekend. And when did you realize you left it here? Oh, please. I didn't pack Thursday when night. When you say here, you mean the shop? In the shop. Oh, jeez. Yes, in the shop. I woke up, and I... Is this your neck up here from yes. there to here? Mm -hmm. So I'm loving it so far. Uh, yeah, and this is my palette. Very pretty. I'm ready to introduce my next and final color. And what you and is the whole thing knit in mohair? No. No, it's two yarns held together. I'll tell you next time. Oh, I see two yarns held yeah. together. It's done in mosaic, so it's slip knitting. Oh, I love this mosaic. This is the back. Love mosaic. Can't really tell. And that's it. Good. Super fun. Love it Watch so far. Watch your edges there. Yeah, Watch thank your stitches. You. <clears throat> you could go on a longer one. Probably, you but should, I don't like aren't you to... increasing? No. You're not? No. Oh. No, no, no. But then you'd be pushing if you did. Yes. That's yeah, so I that's what we're that. talking yeah. about. I don't yeah. know how you guys feel, but when I'm working in the round, um, a lot of customers will often ask, oh, well, you know, the pattern calls for a 40-inch circular needle. Oh, yeah, we don't Because you're knitting we, in the round. When do we ever use for it? We never do. And I always advise people to work on a shorter needle because you have to You're slide pushing all the time. right feed your stitches to the top of the needle correct so correct. i personally i don't mind if it's slightly smushed because then i'm pushing less and i feel like i'm saving a little but time. then what you should get a little of those protectors on there point protectors yeah. yes you do need because that protectors. one's that one's uh this one's flying away that one's flying away <laughs> yeah i can see that okay so what do we got diana what do we have that's new where do you want to start? You tell me. <clears throat> um, how about we start with the Late Summer Dream Tea. It's designed by Siv Kristen Olson. Has anyone heard of it? This is a new to us designer. Fell in love with this tea. It's um, kind of oversized. Kind of airy. Oversized and airy. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was a half fisherman's rib. I think if it I remember. is too. Yeah, she talks about a fisherman's rib. Not half, but a fisherman's rib, which is kind of nice. It's the detail that's at the bottom of the sweater. Yeah, fisherman's rib on the body and sleeves and stocking it on the yoke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I love that. The combination of the two. Uh, she has sizes in centimeters, 112 centimeters to 149. 40, 40, 44, 45 being the smallest, maybe. And the largest is about 60 inches. Mm -hmm. So 40, to, um, 40 inches to about 60 inches is the range. And she has positive ease. Positive ease. Again, that's always up to the the knitter or the wearer, right. what you want. If you want to have 8 to 10 inches of positive ease, that's entirely up to you. Not everybody likes to wear something oversized, but this is a light piece. And um, it's actually the gauge is bulky. But she has you work it with a DK weight and um, a fingering weight mm -hmm. or a mohair, mm -hmm. <clears throat> alpaca silk, as you wish. So we came up with some kits. We are blending a DK with the Surrey alpaca. And uh, we have it kit up through a size. I think it was the extra. This one right here. The large. No, excuse me, the large. Large being 125 centimeters, which was the finished bust. 50. And that's a 50-inch finished, <clears throat> excuse me, finished bust. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so we'll start with kits. Oh, you have that um, over there. I'll hand them to you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we changed our style today. The first one is basic cream. And this is the one we, for this one we use Tove DK with the um, Surrey Silk from uh, Diane and Suburban Stitcher. This is called icing and this is just cream. Right, just like an ivory winter yep. white kind of sweater. Very Super pretty. fun. Now three skeins obviously doesn't make the kit. We're no. only showing you three. Right. This is pretty. This is Dusty Delights from Asylum. And we paired that with Jane. Another Surrey Silk from Suburban Stitcher makes a beautiful that's pretty shaded pink top. <clears throat> now again, these up. what we're showing you. These are DKs, right? DK with a matching Surrey, which so you'll hold these two doubled mm -hmm. throughout mm -hmm. for the sweater. This is another nice that's one. That's a gorgeous one. This is Earl Grey from uh, Asylum, and that's dusty pink. I don't know if you can see it, but the dusty pink. It's not coming up as well, but you can see the vein of that pink going through there. Great combination. This one Go ahead, Daniel, is a zinger, one of a kind. This is Art Yarn Merino Cloud mm. in the neon pink, or Barbie. And then we paired that with Poiple from Asylum Fibers. So that'll be a fun, that'll bright kit. That'll be a kit. fun, bright kit. This is actually the entire kit. Two skeins of the Merino. And three skeins of the Surrey. Right, because it's more yardage in the Merino. Right. <clears throat> um, next up, mm -hmm. Winter Wheat. Winter Wheat. This is the Madeleine Tosh. Great color. You know I'm going to like this color, Winter Wheat. And that's matched with gold from Suburban. What a perfect match that is, huh? The next one is Matcha from Solid from uh, Madeleine Tosh. And that's mixed with Lonely. And Lonely, it's like a green beige. Look how pretty that is. That would make a beautiful that's gorgeous, combination. Isn't it? Yeah. I love all the shading that we did. Yeah. This one is March Hair, H A R E, from Suburban. And we put that with eggplant. Look how nice they go together. I thought that was great. And your basic gray, which is the great gray owl from Madeline Touch. Tosh with smoke from Suburban. Is that it? Last one. Oh, whoa, whoa. Forbidden. This is this was Dinah's color, right, Dinah? We Love talked that about color. this last week. Um, can't find my V-back tea. Get out of here. Yeah. It's got to be home somewhere. I wanted to wear it today, and I really? couldn't find it. Mm -hmm. This is Forbidden. Look at that great colorway from Asylum, and we matched that up with Velvet Magenta from uh, Suburban. All right, so I might tone that. it down a little bit, but you'll see the variation. Yeah, but still, I think very that's pretty. Fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is the late. If they look up late summer dream, will they find it? Right. Good think? question, because it's called the name on it is send send summer draw. I don't know if I'm saying it right. That's a hashtag, but I think that's the designer's hashtag. Let me just look it up for a moment. And again, the link will be down below in the show notes. She says knit by sieve. That must be her knit underscore by underscore sieve is what she says on the bottom. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll tell you. We'll tell you. Late summer dream tea. It does look like a dream. Doesn't it? Yep. Anyway, so... Um, those kits look fun, and it might be an interesting thing for you to try the fisherman rib on the body. That's a fun stitch. What does she call it? Late Summer Dream Tea, or the other one, S-E-N. No, that didn't come up that way, Late Summer Dream Tea. That's probably what it is. That's the hashtag, maybe. How did you get it? I don't know. It's not crazy. <laughs> of course, now I can't find it. We'll find it. We'll find it before the end of the podcast. For sure. Okay, let me look up the designer. Yeah. If you maybe look this up, or maybe which one you can look up her name or this. Knit by Siv. Her name is Siv, S I V, Kristen Olsen, O L S E N. And Kristen is K R I S T I N. Yeah, there you go.
God bless Ravelry. If you're I not a hundred percent correct, you won't find it. Is that her? That's yeah, there her. she is. So let's see. That's a pretty sweater. That is her. Here it is. Okay. Let, let, oh, you know what? Do you know what I, I did? Well, who I'm, would who would think? Who would it's late summer dream is one, one word. word. That's of course one. I made it four words. Late summer well, dream tea. Make it, why would you make it one word? <laughs> so here it is. Late summer dream. Second word. T. Mm-hmm. Two words. Okay, there you have it. And she Very doesn't have cute. it spelt that way on the pattern, though. Which she does it. That's right. She, she has it, it out. Yes. yes. So if you're looking for it on Ravelry, make, make late, sure. late summer dream one word. Yes. I'm glad we found that because you know yes. people wouldn't find that. But you're going to be putting the link in anyway, yes. right? So there yep. you go. So that is kit number one. And speaking of like not being able to find something, finding something, mm -hmm. having questions. Mm -hmm. I just had a customer I was telling Pam, I think, was it last week or two weeks ago that we did the shawl for Multnomah? It was one of the, or like... Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Oh, we did so, it last week. No. We did it last week. Mm -hmm. I think so. I no, we did Honey Cowl and the Ricky Oh, that's hat. right. That's so right. I think it was two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and a lot of you um, really liked the pattern, the Multnomah. We definitely inspired many of you because we certainly it's sold... It's a great pattern. Yeah, a lot of the kits. And I had a client today call me up and ask me about the directions on the Multnomah because it, uh, she didn't understand it. And anytime we promote something, if there's a way that I can help, um, I know this client emailed the designer and she didn't hear back. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. You can call me. I'm glad that I was able to um, shed light. But if any of you are knitting it and you're thinking about knitting it, just keep in mind that this is a pattern. When you, when we have mentioned that, you know, you can increase the shawl size. Mm -hmm. um, it's a feather and fan repeat, and the repeat is 18 stitches. Mm -hmm. So to incorporate a new pattern, you need 18 stitches before you incorporate the new number of stitches right. into the pattern. So, for example, if you're increasing the length of the sweater, and let's say you don't have 18 stitches, what happens to those stitches? They're all knit mm -hmm. because this shawl is predominantly knit and garter stitch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have more than 18 stitches on either side, that's when you incorporate another, another repeat, pattern another repeat. Another feather and fan right. repeat. So she's not explicit, the designer, when she, ta when she talks about it. She just says... <laughs> Um, when you reach a certain repeat, I think it was like after row six or row 10, she talks about when to incorporate the new pattern, but it is assumed that if you're not in pattern with those stitches, it's garter. And once you have 18 stitches, you, you, add, a repeat. you add a repeat. Right, right. And I just wanted to make that clarification because I know there were a lot of you who bought that kit. So thank you. And I just want it to be clear. There you go. Okay. Next kit. Oldie but goodie. I think we have shown this kit every single year. Oh, yeah. This is like, it's I was telling Diana, lot. this is like the shift. It's always live. Yeah. It's always a good kit. And we're talking about Birds of a Feather from uh, Andrea Mowry. Right? Yes. And um, whenever we feel we have the yarn, nice yarn to support it, yarn that we feel would look fabulous, we'll usually replenish our kits. And we did. We added about 16 kits today. Yeah, I think there's about 24. over two dozen yeah. kits. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to, we're not going to show you the ones that were on the website. Bless you, Excuse Diana. Me. We're going to show you the kits that we added to it today. And so to make birds of a feather, it's two skeins of fingering and one skein of mohair. Correct. Right. And I'll start show you the first kit. This is from Suburban. This is Colorway Bobby Girl and Pop Star. How that is a fun that. kit. It would be a fun, a fun um, bird of birds of a feather. This one here is it's electric, and I paired that with bang bang. Mm. So you'll get a solid and the mohair. That's fabulous. Yeah, the mohair. So if you're trying to picture it here, mm -hmm. um, I want to say you could see from the cover that it alternates. So here she's got a little bit of a higher contrast. So some of these you'll see a solid and a speckle. However, some we just did monochromatic because right. not everybody likes to see the stripes. Right, and it's lovely. But it's very yeah, pretty. Exactly. It works either way. This colorway is frost. The fingering weight is frost. 
and the mohair is outside the window. What a great color. Lots of pretty ones. Look at that. I like that icy blue. Yeah, that's very pretty. This one here is Chicory by Suburban Stitcher. And then we blended that with Dreams by Moondrake. That's a pretty one. Yeah. Definitely autumnal. This is a lovely color, one of my favorites. Cozy from Suburban. And we like put that, that with one of her mohairs called Dream House. Look at that. That's fabulous. That is so you. That is so but me. There is another kit that's you. Yeah. This one. <laughs> yeah, that's gorgeous too. Well done. Well done. This is absolutely stunning. This one here is dusty pink. Mm hmm That's pretty too. I thought of Pam when I made this kit and nudie patootie. Oh, look at that. So you can see in the there. speckles really pick right. up the contrast mm -hmm. here in the dusty pink. Love that. This is from Moondrake. It's Ginkgo mixed with it doesn't have a color name. No, I don't know the name of that one, but Knitted um, knitted Wit. But that is a fabulous Isn't combo. Isn't that fun? It's That's so a good. fun, fun combo. Yeah. True. Love this one. This one is coal, and I blended that with Happy Accident. I think that will be stunning. That is pretty. That is pretty. That is, I love that combo, the gray with the, the pink, the plum. Stunning. Very nice. This next one from Suburban, this is her colorway Dark Water, which I think, oops, which I think is so pretty. Look at that dark water, and that's with her dark water mohair. So, so that is a monochromatic where the mohair and the sock yarn are all the same color. Yeah. And that's, yeah. Pretty. That's that kit. Yeah. This one here is Steel, and we paired that with Kitty, a colorway oh, from Ushita. That little fleck that's of gold in there love, is lovely. Love it. It's like a grello. Speaking of gold, that's what this is. It's gold. Gold, gold, and gold. This is from Suburban. It's the gold fingering and the gold mohair for that monochromatic look that we were talking about. This here is Spearmint, and we have that paired with Antique. Another light, icy kind of colorway. It's got yellow and mint going through it. Yeah, soft. love it. This from uh, Diane is Velvet Magenta, and that's mixed with her Sweet Pea. Look at that. That's you a like fun pink, one. that's a fun one. Right? So this is an asymmetrical shawl, yeah. and it, it also involves like a center or a central double decrease. So if you've never done that, um, that's what's happening here, and you're interrupting the pattern stitch with garter stitch and also a feather and fan. Right. And but the feather and fan's not... In every section. No, think. no, it alternates like right. the sections. And when yeah. you're alternating the sections, you're also or alternating the yarn. So right. it's really pretty. This one here is Neptune, and I have that paired with outside the window. So for blue oh, lovers, pretty. that's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Ooh, lovely. And this one is steel, which is a nice gray, and that is paired with Granny Square from Suburban. So if I turn this around, it's a very subtle shading. She's got blues and greens and golds and pinks in there. I have a top made out of Granny Square. That's a great one. Love it. And that's my last one. This one here is Freshly Cut, which is a beautiful, like, grass oh, green. That's gorgeous, too. This is a gorgeous kit. And mm. we have that paired with um, Chelsea's uh, Chelsea Lux Mohair Colorway Peacock. Mm -hmm. So that's a beautiful green colorway if you're into greens. <coughs> and last but not least, I have a monochromatic colorway called Melancholy. Oh, that's nice, that's too. Stunning. I like that as well. Yeah. Definitely great oh. for the winter, fall. Um, it's a lightweight shawl because it's finger weight yes. mm. with the lace mm. weight. And you mm. kind of wrap it around. It's really cozy. Right. Uh, so that's all melancholy. That's lovely. Now, you can see why we made kits, right? Love. They're gorgeous. They're gorgeous. Dinah did them, I should say. Dinah made oh, a great kit. She made the kits. Beautiful. You did well, Dinah. Thank you. You did a good job. And there are a lot of other ones that are on the website. Um, so right. these aren't all the options that you'll see. Uh, they're just a sampling. These are just the new ones that we added. Uh, we always like to replenish when they start running low. So we figured it was a good time since it was an oldie but a goodie. Absolutely. What did I do with the patterns over here? Did I hand them to you? Oh, oh there, there you are. are. Yes. There you go. Okay. I think it's underneath. That's what I was looking for. Is it there? Peekaboo. <laughs> yeah, it's we just do one have page. one new kit. Yes. And it's called Hey Sailor from Drea Renee, Andrea Mowry. And we chose to show you the picture with the buttons in the front. Uh, you can wear it either way with the buttons in the back, which is an attractive way to do it as well. Or you can wear it with the buttons in the front. And... Um, it's fingering weight yarn. 
And what else can you say about it? It's slip stitches. It's the bottom up, I believe. And um, all the other attributes will all in Ravelry if you look it up. Right? Yes, I do want to say she's... Um, oh, we have to talk about the knit. The uh, She's having an Instagram knit along. She calls it an Insta, Insta knit. Insta Friends Cal 2024. Yes. That's right. the hashtag. Insta right. Friends Cal 2024. It's a loosey goosey kind of a knit along. Um, it's just to bring the community together. It's running through the end of January. January. Right. Started September 18th through the end of January. So, again, plenty of time. You could even start it now. And if you finish it by the end of January, you'll have it for the spring. Right? Yes. If, you know, I mean, you could Which also live in a climate where you could make it now or, you know, wear it now, too. It looks like a fun knit. So we put kits together for this. Now, I'm not sure what size did the kits go through? Uh, good question. 47. I think it was 47. Maybe 47 inches. Or something yes, like that's that. right. 47.75 inches. Um, I love what Andrea wrote on Instagram. She said she was excited to share this first tall new pattern. Hey, Sailor was born from her desire to pack less while traveling, um, but still had cute outfit options so what you'll notice on her pattern page she has it worn in the front like a pullover sweater right. with the buttons closed she has it opened like a cardigan like a short cardi because she did the crop length and she does offer a full length she also has it offered worn the other way around where the buttons are down the back it's got a boat neck detail there's got a main color and uh yeah it's super cute so we decided to make a few kits. Uh, we didn't go crazy, but if you'd like to see more options, just leave a comment and let us know. Absolutely. We'll try to help you and accommodate you. Um, again, the knit along that's going on is on Instagram. So you can follow Drea Renee Knits and you'll see all the details. Um, Pam, the twos are the main color. Okay, so we're not showing you all the skeins, but we made our kits using Santa Scarn Sunday. This main color here is going to be this taupe color. It's like a brown taupe. And then we paired that with a light pink. Oh, that's pretty. So that'll be very pretty. So it's when you see the, the, it go? the main color. Is that the picture? Here. Okay. I was just going to give them. So if you're looking at the, yeah. So the top of the boat neck and the button band and the border will be in this main color. And then, of course, these two colors will play with each other in the boxes. Yep. Now... Interestingly, when you see the picture here, that red that's coming through is actually the contrast color. So you will see a dark border here with a light, a light body. body, that little check on the inside. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's kind of the inverse of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's one option. Next option, again, having a darker border, we went with the blue. And then we went with the camel. So the camel, so the blue will be the borders. And then you'll have the camel as the body of the sweater with blue boxes. Very pretty. Yeah. I got it down. Sorry. This one here is a gray sweater. Gray borders. And then we went with the chest or body color of the pink. And you'll have the little boxes in the gray. Next up is this light beige, and we have it paired with the steel gray. So again, the borders on the top will be the light beige. The body, oh, excuse me. This isn't steel gray, it's an olive green. Mm. The body of the sweater will kind of give you a green cast, and you'll get the light beige boxes. I love this colorway. Stunning. That'd be great. Now, if you had a desire. For example, this one here is going to have a red border or the maroon, the Merlot. Um, and you wanted to have the inverse. We did that with the light pink body, but you wanted to have the opposite. Just call us and we'll flip it around. Yes. Yeah, so when or you leave see a the, comment, when you see the pictures on the website, the the way it's photographed, you'll see one colorway has four skeins. That when you look at it, that will be your main color. So in this, right. So in, in this example, this is the main color. It's photographed with four skeins. Mm -hmm. That is your rib color here. And then the body color that's coming out would be this. That's right. I think that's pretty. I like that yep. one. Yep. Okay. Next up, we have camel. 
as your main color. And then we did gray. I dinosaur this on one I of the... I think it was the inverse. Was it this or the inverse? Oh, I don't know. Might have been the inverse, but it doesn't matter because you could pick. Um, there's so Maybe many... You saw it with gray. The gray was up here. And that's yes. what the main color is. I gave it to you the wrong way? Maybe. I gave it to you the wrong way. Okay. So then yeah. gray is the main color. And gray if you wanted to color. picture it... Yeah, gray is the main color. Right. You can yeah, go on Ravelry because right. we did get our inspiration from one of the knitters. Um, this is it. But again, if you liked it the other way, you could do it that way too. Hundred percent. You know, make gray the, right. But this is trim. very pretty. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not really high contrast, but it's gorgeous. It's very pretty. Yeah. I love I love gray and camel together. And Pam put this kit together. It's absolutely gorgeous. This is black. Oh. That's black like, is the that's main. That's like a that's a like staple. a that's like a staple in a wardrobe. Right? And then we did this. It's called burnt sugar. This caramel color. And that is. This color option. So super cute. I'll make a great cardigan. Wouldn't that be nice? Like with the buttons open. Yeah. I would probably wear this more like we a cardigan. We were just saying, Dan and I were saying that, pullover. which is probably why we, we the photo we, fi we featured was the one with the buttons in the front. Right. But it's great that you can wear it. You have that option. Three different ways. Yeah. yeah. Love that. So kudos to you, Andrea. Beautiful design. Love your. Actually, it was the eighth, the eighth instant ever one. Oh, it's her eighth. Yeah, yeah which I didn't is know really, that. I didn't I know that she, where yeah. have I been living under a rock that I didn't know that? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. think we've ever promoted an I don't, knit along. I don't recall it. I was surprised when I saw we've that. We've done it her other knit alongs, like the sock, like yeah, when yeah. it's like um, yeah. a holiday weekend. The one Memorial Day that yes. she does. Yeah. Yep. But this is our first Insta. So there you go. If you're into it, great. If you need, um, if you have stash yarn and you want to match a color, by yep. all means, reach out. Same thing with the, um, Birds of a feather. Birds of a feather. Yeah. No. If you have DK weight yarn and stash, you may just need a mohair that you need a uh, to go with some fingering at home. Right. Or even with the um, late summer dream, the tees. Yeah, if you yeah, have DK weight yeah, and stash, and yep. you want to use yep. it for something else, yep. Let us know. That's why the luminous tee was a great project, because that was like two and two and one. A lot of people did stash dive yeah, on that one. That yeah. was great. That was that was great. Yeah, you know, you could easily do that. And not only do people have their own stash to actually knit it, mm -hmm. I had many requests. Like people would email me their yarn mm -hmm. for a I match. Would, yes. Yeah. yeah. And I love doing that. It's fun. It's fun. Well, yeah. That's the Especially fun part. if I can get your. And we live vicariously down. through you, <laughs> don't we? Yes. <laughs> Can't right. possibly knit everything that's out there. But go ahead. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, so we have two giveaways. Two giveaways, yeah. Two giveaways. It's a great bag. For our 200th episode. Mm-hmm. With 200 grams of yarn. And, and this Delacue, great Delacue bag. It's really cute. It's mm -hmm. got the snaps and a side zipper, so you can put your notions and stuff on one, and then you can put your knitting projects right in here right and in feed there. the yarn through the grommet. Love could it. could do anything, yeah. Clearly, it fits two 100 skein yarns. Easily. 100 gram yeah. skeins, excuse yeah. me. So you'll definitely fit like a shawl project in there. Mm -hmm. um, how Amazing. do you win... Or how do you enter to win? How the do you enter to win? Well, we're going to do a number generator, and the question um, we're going to ask. Go ahead, you ask, Dan. Go ahead. Oh. Well, we were thinking. You know, we've done two hundred episodes of this podcast. What are some of your favorite episode? Not episodes per se, but your favorite thing that you know maybe you've seen in the podcast. Whether it was something funny, yeah, that we might have shared. Something silly. It could be a project that you absolutely right. loved. Right, right. Just right. what was your favorite takeaway? Right from, from an any, episode. From any of the episodes, there is no right. We just want. Yeah, we're right. just wondering. We just want, yeah, exactly. Uh, from all the answers that we we receive, we'll enter the number. If we receive two hundred replies, we'll put the number two hundred in, and we'll, it'll be a number we'll generator. Do, and we'll do two of them. Right. Yeah. Exactly. This is not tell three friends. It's if just it's your lucky day, you'll win. <laughs> I'm trying to. Who is? I forget the <laughs> name of the customer. She won two. Two raffles in a row. Oh, did she? Yeah, we oh. don't really do that many raffles. No, we don't. Yeah, I can't remember so the last funny. time we did one. Mm -hmm. Well, this is fun. So, a nice giveaway for the two yeah. hundredth episode. Yeah, and it's very appropriate that it should be at the beginning of the fall season. I mean, it's perfect. Yeah. So there you go. Right. So, enter um, to win. We look forward to hearing your. What comments. was the other question you asked me the other day before? 
You asked my question earlier in the episode. What is your favorite type of yarn? Like what weight yarn do you like to knit? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. There you go. How are we going to differentiate between the comments now? I see. You shouldn't have asked that one. Okay, don't answer that question. No, answer the question. <laughs> I'm curious. <laughs> we'll, we'll, have, we'll count them. We'll, we'll count them. I mean, listen, how we many do we get? Them. Come on. <laughs> I mean, really, if we have to count up to 100, I think we can do it. <laughs> I think so, too. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, anyway. It's like we're, uh, you know, anyway, whatever. Thank you for joining <laughs> us. 200 episodes. We appreciate all your time. Absolutely. Uh, we love that you join us week after week. Um, if you're new to us, welcome. Please don't forget to subscribe. Hit mm -hmm. like if you enjoy the episode. And... Uh, yeah. We'll see you next week and we'll let you know who the winners are. How does there that sound? Sounds Have a great good. week. Bye, everyone.